So why would why someone would think that a Green Party candidate has to be, or a Libertarian candidate, has to be a protest vote? Why can't it be a real vote at this point? When you're talking about the kind of social media outreach that, that is capable today, that's possible today, well, you, a person who has some really good points and has a really, look at this woman who won in New York, the 28-year-old girl is a Democratic Socialist. I like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yes. Look, if that doesn't tell you, like, this world is changing in a radical way, and upstarts and, and, and people who are huge underdogs have the possibility of winning. It's not a protest vote. It's an actual vote. And if everybody <laughs> who thinks this way votes towards that protest vote, guess what? They win. That's right. That's what it is. So I used to uh, have a joke where I would say, uh, no, you can't, vote for, uh, you can't vote for a third party candidate until a lot of people are already voting for a third party candidate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what they're just, say you can't vote for them. they have no chance to win so you have to wait till a lot of people are already so that you they, yeah. people don't understand that inherent contradiction and by the way people uh, maybe if you spent a tenth of the energy trying to excite the half of the country that doesn't vote yeah. As you do and trying to sh voter shame progressives or Green Party or environmentalists for not giving you their vote, which you do not fucking own. Right. Exactly. If you were to spend a tenth of the energy trying to excite people who don't participate to participate instead of shaming the people who do participate, maybe you'd get somewhere. It's also this reluctance to admit that both sides are corrupt is this very strange thing that exists on people who operate within this narrow bandwidth. And this narrow bandwidth is whatever side you're on, whether it's you're on the right or the left, this is the side that you want to win. And it's the right side, and they're the good people. And the other side, even though, well, even though our side does wrong, this side does worse. And they, they operate in this real narrow bandwidth. This is why she would think something that's possibly negative for her side is a protest vote instead of being your actual feelings on the issue. And if these people really cared about voting integrity, wouldn't they want paper ballots? Yeah. If they really cared about uh, voter integrity, wouldn't they want ranked choice voting? Wouldn't they want that? Then you don't, that? Have, don't, you, don't, you don't have to worry about this. Ranked choice voting? What ranked choice. So they have it in Maine now. Right. So uh, it's where, so, you know, you, you, you get to, this is my first choice. This is my second choice. This is my third choice. Oh. So you don't get to, so it, it, it eliminates that you're a spoiler. Oh, right. Interesting. Yeah. So um, and, and they voted in in Maine and the politicians, of course, don't want it. So they got yeah. rid of it uh, and they had to court reinstate it. They had to, I think it's happened twice now. How does it work in terms of like, say, if you're going to vote for, uh, you know, the governor of Maine? You have a first choice, a second choice, and yeah, a let's third say, choice. Let's say there's three choices. Right. So you get to you get to say, well, let's say let's say if your first choice was a Green Party candidate, mm -hmm. you go, okay, that's my first choice, but my second choice would be the Democrat. So in case and my third of a, choice would be you know maybe nobody. And so does like second choice have different points? So if you if your first choice doesn't get enough votes mm -hmm. to win, then your second choice goes right. Mm. So that's how it works. So you're never wasting your vote. And you know what's ironic. Is that, and I might have, you know, there's been people who can better explain that. So please, I know people are going to, Jamie, the way, better way to say that, I, I'm sure there's better ways. But the thing that kills me is that Bernie Sanders, his whole career was about being an independent. And I have videotapes of him saying, you know what kills me is I go out and I do, I do these talks and I talk to the people, they come up to me after these debates and they say, you know, I like what you said, and uh, you you make the most sense. Uh, but I can't vote for you because you're never going to win. I hate that. They go, I want to waste my vote. Oh, if there's one thing I hate more than that that phrase, waste your vote. Mm. This was what he was saying his entire career until now. And I want to know why. I want to know what the hell does Bernie Sanders in 2018 know that Bernie Sanders in 2006 didn't know, and Bernie Sanders in 1996 doesn't know. And he tells everybody you got to run. And he's you know getting people to come into the Democratic Party, which is actively cheating them. Yet he still cheating runs, him and him. Yeah. Yet he still runs as an independent in Maine. I mean in Vermont, he still runs. Everybody's saying you guy you can't. Do. He gets to run as an independent. He gets to run as an independent while representing the Democratic Party. Yes. Sometimes yes. So they have a special sweetheart deal. In so what is he saying when he said is he saying now that protest votes are a waste? Like what is he saying? He told everybody to vote for Hillary. He told I mean he's not starting a third party, and you know his whole life he was like he said that we have to have the the, the verbiage he used one time I saw him was that uh, you know uh, Jesse Jackson's correct we need we need a rainbow coalition of people, uh, but it has to happen outside of the Democratic Party. He said that that was him.
So we have to have a progressive coalition, but it has to happen outside. And who better to lead it but Bernie Sanders? So that's why it's hard to start a third party, because you need people who are already po- famous and popular and uh, in government. So if he left and he got, say, Tulsi Gabbard and Nina Turner and Al- Alexandria ocasio Cortez, and he got a bunch of people that are super popular on the left, we'd have a third party at, that would be polling at 10, 15 percent. And now the Democrats would have to form a coalition instead of what they're doing now, which is ignoring progressives. After she uh, cheated Bernie Sanders, after the Democrats cheated Bernie Sanders in the primary, Hillary Clinton didn't choose Bernie Sanders as her vice president, as an olive branch. She didn't choose Elizabeth Warren as an olive branch. She went to her right. She got Tim Kaine, who's to the right of her, who's Mm. anti-union, who's everything bad thing you want, and a corporate Democrat. He's pro-wall, the whole deal. She went so just so if we had a third party that actually pulled at 10 or 15 percent, they would have to they couldn't do that anymore. They'd have to they'd have to do a thing called Joe voter outreach instead of voter shaming or it's what it's devolved to now, which is democracy shaming. They're literally shaming people for participating in democracy. You don't get to participate in democracy because you're a third party. Well, fuck you. That's called democracy. And so, yes, I do. And I get to vote my conscience. And we'll be right back. Ah, that's a good break. That's a good ad break right there. That's solid. If you're on a radio show, that would be the way to go. 